Well, here's a Hooky uh, outrigger seat that needs to be removed, and mainly because it has a leak at the end, at the rear end of the slide track. And here, what we'll do first is slide the seat all the way back and take this little strap here underneath the little slide rod, hook it up, tighten it down so that I can get one hand around it. I have gloves on so that when I pull this thing up, it won't snap and hurt my fingers. Slide the rod all the way back, if it does slide at all. Seats all the way back. And now, put on the other glove. Pull up on the strap and it's going to make a big noise here. That's, that's that. Track is out. This is the stern end of the seat track of a Hookie Outrigger canoe from which the seat and the slide rod have been removed. We are looking for a leak. We have placed some soapy water in the little channel and we will now pressurize the canoe and we will shortly see whether or not this canoe is leaking at this rear end. Five seconds please. This is the repair of the Hookie Outrigger Canoe. And this is specifically a repair of a leak at the rear of the slide track for one of the seats. And you can see that I've already prepared this area by taping up taping up around the hole where this rod goes. And I have here the rod, and I will have prepared the rod by wrapping it with one layer of handy wrap and a tape to hold the handy wrap on. I've mixed up some epoxy to put into this little hole, and the epoxy is thickened. And we're going to shove that epoxy in there. Shove that epoxy in there. We hope it gets in there. And now we will take this tape, taped rod, and give it a push in. We'll leave this rod in. And we're pretty much done with the repair, except for one thing, and that would be uh, only to put a little bit of suction on the canoe. Enough suction, not enough suction to collapse the canoe, but enough suction to pull in some of the epoxy into a little hole that we are trying to seal. After inserting the rod, I removed the tape from around the area where I inserted it, removed the excess epoxy with a Q-tip, and then Jerry rigged a system whereby I would press down on the rod while the epoxy was curing so that 
the rod would be sitting in its working position. Later on, I'll just remove the rod and we hope that it will release easily because of the tape and the handy wrap that I placed around the end of the rod earlier.